We're on the hunt for one of Japan's most venomous snakes, the habu. On the island of snakes in Japan, Okinawa. And this is a habu viper, the animal we've come to find. <laughs> Just wait there. And after to stop talking. G'day YouTube. Sorry, it's been a while. G'day YouTube. G'day YouTube. I am in Okinawa and we are gonna go look for some Okinawan reptiles in Japan here. Anyway, gotta go catch my monorail. I am in Japan on what I'm calling the Island of Snakes, but it's a weird place. It's Okinawa and there's a spider web on my face, which is an island way to the south. It's actually closer to Taiwan than it is to Japan. And there is some really, really full on war history here. And I'll be filming that as well. I might make a second video, which you can check out here. Towards the end of World War II, a very bloody battle took place on the island of Okinawa between the Americans and the Japanese. Many scars still remain both on the landscape and the Okinawan people. But this island of Okinawa is full of vipers called Habu. Let's see if we can find one and check out some of the war history and the jungle around it. So the main target of this trip is the Habu, a pit viper with a bit of a fearsome reputation locally. Along for the ride too is my partner Megan. She's always wanted to come to Okinawa and is very excited to check out the wildlife and the history of the place. Alright, we're at Hacksaw Ridge, a famous historical war site. It also looks perfect for Habu vipers. So, our first herp is not the most exciting one, but it still gets a ball rolling. Some sort of gecko. There's a Gehira that is native to Japan, so maybe it's that. I can't really tell from here, I can't really reach this. There is daytime so it's quite dark. Looking oh. down this old war structure in the city for Habu and whatever else we can find. We've flown into Naha, the capital city of the island of Okinawa. The plan is to hire a car and head from the south end of the island all the way to the north one end to the other. The south end of the island is densely populated, whereas the north is covered in rainforest, and that's where we're headed. Right, we've packed up our little Yaris. About to head off herping and looking at war history. Uh, our car has been staying in a hotel. This is how the car park works here. It's on a hoist and it rotates so you don't even have to turn around and reverse out. Amazing. Oh, someone behind me. All the signs are in Japanese, I don't know what anything means. Alright, we're in the wild 
jungle is so hot now. And, uh, we're gonna go look for reptiles. Here's the thing. Even in the jungles on the trailheads, they have vending machines everywhere in this country. Just got the first herp of the trip. And I don't even know what species it is. It's some sort of gecko, some sort of climbing gecko. I was hoping it'd be a ground gecko. The ground geckos look very pretty. So we're just trying to find like a bit of nature to wander around in Okinawa. We're in the southern part, so there's not much or the middle really. And there's a castle. Second herp and it is some sort of frog. <laughs> Ages away in a drain, but you've got to take your wins. You can hear them calling in the background, and I'm so great at IDing, it's going to appear on the screen right now. So, apart from a few frogs and geckos, we didn't find too much around the south or even the center of the island. On top of being a densely populated area, full of predators like cats, the island was also heavily, heavily bombed in the south. Entire mountains were blown up. This likely had a massive impact on the ecology on the southern half of the island, and why the north is so much better to herb. Pigs, habu, and, I don't know, wolves? We'll find out. If we make it alive. Are you lost, mate? The beach is ages away. We found a hermit crab it's in the enormous. forest. Or at least half a K, if not a K or two away from the beach. What do you know, mate? Bright lights of Okinawa. been hiking for ages and finally found an interesting herb. If I was in Australia I'd call that a barred frog, I'm not sure what that is here. We're at a roadwork sign while herping and there's a red light. In case you weren't aware, there is roadworks going on. Hey want to give you a seizure while you're driving. In front of the... Oh, hello. Score, we got a snake. This is an odd tooth snake. And he's, we've got to move him off the road. He's just sitting on the road, so... And he doesn't like me. Come have a look at that. Yep. Big, beautiful collier bread. BBC, as I like to say. We'll move him off so he doesn't get squashed. Oh, leave me alone, mate. There we go. Japanese snake rescue. These are the Okinawan shisus. They originated from the Chinese characters, but the Okinawan ones are specific to Okinawa. Uh, one has a closed mouth to keep good spirits in and the other has an open mouth to scare bad spirits away and they're everywhere these beautiful spiritual statues are literally on every entrance to every building we've left naha behind and we've headed for the coast okinawa is famous for its beautiful subtropical reef it also has some of the most beautiful coastline you'll ever see. We are island boys. <laughs> Time to hit the beach and do some snorkeling.
I'm gonna go uh, snorkel now. See if we can find some venomous sea creatures. I'm trying not to tread on any. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. The reefs we check out are full of beautiful coral, full of colours and fish life. And then I see something that I'm pretty sure is on everyone's bucket list for snorkeling. I found Nemo! Our favourite fish, the clownfish, is known for being able to live amongst the anemones. Also known as the anemone fish, the clownfish is covered in a layer of slime which protects its skin from the sting of the anemone which it lives in. As you can see here, it's aggressively defending its home from me, the perceived intruder. Of the 800 or so species of coral worldwide, more than half live right here. I've snorkeled all over the world and even live on the Great Barrier Reef, but some of the most impressive fish finds I've ever seen are right here in Okinawa. And it's a lot of fun checking out all the wildlife on the reef, including chasing this moray eel here. While Okinawa is surrounded by many reefs, the best part, so I've heard anyway, is the middle part around the village of Ona. If you've been snorkeling here before, Comment below where your favourite spot is. But as I head back into the shallows, I spot something dangerous. And it looks like there's plenty of them about. It's a cone shell. Any of these are deadly, or well, some of these, most of these will just mess up your day. This one's dead, there's nothing living in it. Never pick them up, but I've seen plenty, so kind of know what I'm doing. Cone shell, another dead one. And swarms. Hammock crabs are swarming. And the crabs are swarming. They're feeding on the pandanus fruit. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Cool. Oh, there's a cone shell back here, a dead one. Put him down now. All that swimming has worked up quite an appetite. Luckily, Okinawan food is delicious. Nothing later, but first, Japanese lunch. Okinawan lunch. <laughs> Okinawans are culturally very different from the Japanese, and their food's amazing. Well, most of it. So it wouldn't be a YouTube video without uh, some food. And Spam is really big in Okinawa. And that's a Spam sandwich. Seaweed, egg, rice, and Spam. Mm -mm -mm. Spam sandwich. It's as bad as it sounds. Sorry, Okinawans, but no. That's a stonefish in the fish market, as well as coconut crab. That's amazing. Lobsters and everything. Stonefish. The most venomous fish in the world, and they eat it. 
there's also this fugu around the blowfish too. Being located on an island in the Pacific of Asia, of course seafood's going to be a big part of the diet. And just about everything is on the menu. But fish are not the only dangerous thing on the menu here. I'm about to try an alcoholic drink, a very alcoholic drink, called Habushu. So this is the Habushu. Uh, generally I don't like snake products or animal products, but this snake is a Taiwanese Habu and it's introduced to the island. Bottom Strong? Strong, spicy. Ooh. Mm, that's a really nice. You can check out the fangs of the habu. Typical viper fangs, very long. And it's an introduced species, so I don't mind eating an introduced species, or in this case, drinking. The snakes are preserved before they're put into the shu, which is like a sake, I guess. Right, our mori, which we've got here. These are all the local drinks. And this habushu is very famous, very expensive too. <laughs> As the sun sets over the coast, it's time for us to pack the Yaris with our head torches and cameras and head off into the forest. It's time to do some night herping. Ready to go herping? Yes. It's been several nights of looking now, and I still haven't found a habu by myself. I'm starting to get anxious as to whether I'll see one at all. Right after sunset and the habu is coming out for a hunt. Yes, we got a habu. And not just any habu, a princess habu. Probably feels a bit put on the spot by my torchlight. But what he's doing right now is a thing called Crypsis. If he sits really still, he reckons I can't see him. But, sorry mate, I can. Oh, you see that tongue flick? He's checking me out. He's having a good smell. You can see he's moving his tongue my way. And he can see my heat signal. And it goes to show they're hard to see. He's just hiding in there. We're here on the island of snakes in Japan, Okinawa. And this is a habu viper, the animal we've come to find. But you see, they're not big dangerous. Whoop. Huh. Now that's a good predator fan, so I was trying to show. If I touch his tail, then he would have shot off, but. He knew I was about to touch his tail and he's pulled his tail in so now if I touched it there's a good chance he would try to bite me. Now the bite, their reputation is far worse than it actually is. The bite's not particularly venomous especially when you're from Australia like me. I don't even know if I'd bother going to hospital for it but it's probably a good idea for any venomous bite to go to hospital. But me personally I don't know. And look at that posturing. Now I reckon if I came in and touched him, he'd probably bite one of my fingers. He's just trying to defend his own personal space. And that's fine. I'll respect that, mate. So this is a princess habu, a local Okinawan species. 
and they're absolutely everywhere in this little patch of rainforest. Anyway, I'll leave him go. I reckon we might find some more. That's so cool. I'm stoked. Have a look at this. That is a, I believe, a sword tail newt. Uh, can you show uh, the underbelly? That's a spectacular bit of this animal. Have a look at that. <laughs> it's so that beautiful. That is beautiful. Oh. That's newtacular. A special animal. Newts are a really exciting find when you're from Australia. We don't have newts or salamanders. The only amphibians we have are frogs. And of course the introduced cane toad as well. But that's it. So this is a really exciting find for us. Right, off he goes. See you later, mate. Alright, snakes are coming out right now. This is a Ryuki odd tooth snake. He's not loving me. Uh, he's a rear fang colubrid snake. I'll just get him out so we can have a look. You gonna come out mate? There we go. Come on buddy. <laughs> Whoa! Ah, oh, here we go. We finally got him to stop, take an offensive pose. He's harmless, but he does want to have a go at me. <laughs> I'm in his way, he's saying. Related to the wolf snakes, I believe they're a lycodon unless they've changed. Well, these are one of the most common snakes of Okinawa. I probably should have researched their diet so I can tell you about it. Actually, I believe these guys might eat baboos. They'll eat anything reptile or amphibian. And in other parts of Asia, this group of snakes called the wolf snake. Or wolf snake. <laughs> and you might see why at the moment. Look at that. I'm just going to get a photo, that's awesome. Known locally as the Akamata snake, these guys turned out to be the most common snake we came across in Okinawa. Look at this beautiful vertebral striping, yellows and orange, with the black. And this is one grumpy snake. <laughs> oh, all right. We'll leave him to be on his way. One more photo. Sorry, mate. You're just too pretty. And this is why Okinawa is the island of snakes. <laughs> Thank you.
This is so cool walking through the Yamburu Forest. Oh, it stopped doing it now. There's an owl calling I'm trying to film. Oh well, there's some bamboo. <laughs> Invertebrates out here are amazing as well. There's a daddy long legs. This beautiful butterfly. These rock structures have proved really good to find reptiles in. Check out what my wife just spotted. <laughs> She's found me another beautiful young Ryuku Oddtooth snake sitting, what a good spot, it's sitting with just its head out of the rocks. Everything's just coming out at the moment. We had, we've had a little trouble finding snakes and I think we've worked out that a lot of the snakes in Okinawa are crespuscula, which means you want to be heading out around sunset if you're herping here, particularly for the snakes. Finding a lot living in these walls. Anyway, I'm going to leave him and keep looking for snakes. See if we can find another species. So you mate, enjoy your little rock cave. As we walk through the forest, we're surrounded by beautiful flickering little lights moving about. And that's this creature, the firefly. Check out this firefly we've found. Fireflies all around us. These luminescent winged beetles communicate by flashing lights through their abdomen to each other. This is what it looks like to us, but with the night vision. This is what it looks like. Off it goes. Oh, there's one right behind your back. Mm. So we're just filming these fireflies that are everywhere. I don't know if the camera's going to pick them up. Spectacular. Oh, fantastic. Check out what we've found in this drain. This is going to be one of the best finds of the trip. That's so cool. I haven't seen a green one yet, and that's meant to be the common form. This is a treasure of Japan, a national treasure. Considered the most beautiful frog in Japan. The Ishikawa's frog. Normally it comes in a green form, but in a few small locations it comes in a blue form. And you just see it did a predator defense. Probably doesn't like my lights. Just some excretion there. What a cool frog. They get even brighter blue than this. That's such a cool find. Alright, let's go get some photos. It reminds me of the waterfall frog from North Queensland. Similarly, we're finding these guys in heavy mist areas as well where it's very humid and moist. Might be an example of convergent evolution. Just gonna interrupt you for a second to like and subscribe and to show you something we found in Cairns, Australia. It's a very similar frog to the Ishikawa frog, at least on the surface. It's a great example of convergent evolution. Lives in the rainforest too. We're back in North Queensland. And I'm gonna show you a good example of convergent evolution. We're at a waterfall, and we've got a waterfall frog here. Like the Ishikawas, they love the misty areas. These ones, extra so. So the waterfall frog lives in very close proximity to waterfalls. As you can tell, it's really loud here. So they have a very quiet mating call, and they actually wave their hands to find their mate. Pretty amazing stuff. Anyway, I just wanted to show you this. This is a good example of convergent evolution. Comment below if you can think of any good examples of convergent evolution in herbs. Anyway, back to Japan. 
All right, so we'll leave this beautiful frog, definitely one of the targets of the trip. I can't believe we got a blue one. I didn't think that'd happen. Anyway, we're gonna go on and see what else we can find tonight. And another habu. His pointy little nose, vertical eye. And this one's a really pretty one, it's a young one. Gorgeous. We're sitting in the water waiting for a frog to come past. Oh wow, Megan's found another habu. Where? Oh yes, yeah. yeah, sweet. You can hear the frogs calling all around that he's waiting to come along and chew down. Well, not really chew I guess, but envenomate with his long fangs and munch on. Well, not munch I guess, uh, swallow whole. You know what I mean. Got a dramatic scene about to play out. It's a boo. It's eyeing off the frog here. If that frog gets any closer, it's a boo food. We're walking up a small creek which is full of these Ryuku Kajika frogs. These are by far the most common frogs in this part of Okinawa. And that habu is not the only thing hunting frogs. This Ryuku odd tooth snake is foraging around with its head in the ground, hunting for burrowing frogs to eat. Oh, stop. So. Uh, Check it out. We got a Ryuku ground gecko. I believe it's this one. Come on out, buddy. Ah, <laughs> oh, he's on me. Would you look at that? Yeah, Megan, take the camera. <laughs> Let's try to move a leaf to have a look and jump straight onto me. There's several type of ground gecko and they're just beautiful with stunning red eyes. And that's one way to tell them. And they've got oh, eyelid-like structures. And you can see he's got big claws on him. So still a very good climber. Nice beak snout. And they're gorgeous, bumpy skin. So you can tell this one's got a regenerated tail. See, just there. Got a little ear opening so you can hear what I'm saying. And he says, your Australian accent sounds really funny. And we just put him back to where he was. There you are, mate. Take a picture and leave him on his way. For a night, we're trying to cross this creek and there's a snake cruising about, looking for frogs and things to eat. Maybe he's looking for haboos as well to eat. Uh, if I could get across, mate, that'd be really nice. Look at you. Don't worry everyone, I've done this with taipans and tiger snakes, I know what I'm doing. This is a harmless snake, comparative, com well it's a harmless snake in general. I have absolutely no issue with snakes going around my feet. 
Right. See you later, mate. Happy hunting. Native green tree frog. Not related to any of the Australian green tree frogs. There you go, mate. It's green and it's a frog and it's on a tree. What more could you ask for in a green tree frog? I just about stepped on this habu. They're very well camouflaged. Habu on your shoe. Poor habu. Poor habu. <laughs> Neither of us uh, is worse off for it, so that's good. He's got his head raised, going, what just happened? All right. You're going to be real careful walking around. <laughs> I think that's habu number four for tonight, so... Yeah. Snake number 12. Or is it snake number nine? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Whatever. The boos have heat sensing pits on the front of their snout, like old pit vipers. You can see just in front of his eye there and near his nose, that's a heat sensing pit. They can see the heat signals that animals put off. So I look like a giant fiery ball to him. Very threatening. And that's how they can strike so accurately. They're a member of the pit viper group, like the green pit vipers of Southeast Asia and the rattlesnakes of North America. Pit vipers also have front fangs that fold back into their mouth. And when they strike, they fold out rapidly and into the animal. Unlike a lapid snakes, Australian front fanged venomous snakes, their fangs don't fold back at all. There are four species of pit viper in Okinawa, three native and one introduced, locally known as habu. This species is known in Japan as a himei habu. It's also known internationally as the Okinawan pit viper or Princess Habu. Okay, this is how good herping is in Okinawa. This is one of tooth snake, and I think there might be some breeding behavior going on because found one odd tooth snake, and there's another one up ahead. I think he's following. So I'm wondering if it's a male here following a female. Weird to see two in the same area, I guess. So maybe they're breeding. That's very cool. We're seeing so many snakes tonight, again. We'll definitely leave them to their love. Oh, no, 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 hang on, there's another one here. Oh my goodness, there's a third. Oh, this is definitely breeding behavior. So there's a third one. Or maybe it's a female on the end. And these are a couple of males in hot pursuit. <laughs> and I think there might be a menage fire about to happen. Alright. Another frog, green tree frog. It might be the sort with a pointed nose. Might be a new species for us. I'll have to check this out when I'm back. I think this is a frog, eh? Not a toad. But look at the size of it. That's huge. Whoa. What a big bastard. This is as big as my hand. Using the night vision on the camera, we spot something really cool. We've got some native pigs here. 
This small species of wild boar is known locally as the Ryuku Inoshishi. The next morning we wake up to grey skies. A cyclone has just hit the Philippines and Guam and is headed for us and we're situated on a remote cape in northern Okinawa. All right, so we've got Tropical Cyclone Betty, or also known as Typhoon Mawa. Should be crossing in the next 24 to 48 hours. So tomorrow morning we've got to drive back, but we're just checking out Cape Hedo before our last hair here. So we're at the northern point of Okinawa, checking out Cape Hedo. We've gone from the south to the north point of the island now, looking for wildlife. And we've got to wind it up after tonight because uh, Tropical Cyclone Betty, or Typhoon Mawa, as it's also known, is just about to hit the island in a couple of days. So, cancelling some of the herping. But it's not over yet. We're going to spend the rest of the day looking around the northern part of Okinawa and herping the Yanbaru forest at night. One of the sad things we're seeing all across Japan is just rubbish everywhere. Now apparently they have a cultural thing where they don't put bins anywhere in the community and you're meant to take your trash home, but it's clearly not working. And the sad thing is, in North Queensland, around the tip of Cape York, I've seen all this Japanese rubbish washed all the way down the Pacific, on the Pacific currents, down to Australia. So I'm back in Australia, 
up the north of Cape York Peninsula. And this is where all that rubbish from Japan ends up. On this beautiful, beautiful beach. Remote beach in the middle of a national park, so. It's not just your own country you're affecting Japan, it's mine too. Sort it out. So we're on the look for a rare Okinawan bird called the Okinawan rail. It's flightless and it could be anywhere, but where is it? Kaka, tuki tuki, kaka. Welcome to Jurassic Chicken. And while we're being silly, we spot this wild goat eating a cycad. <laughs> Is that a sheep? Or... No, it's a goat. Finally a diurnal snake. It's another odd tooth. Clipping tin. Probably good in any country, but this one's sitting on top. Must live in there. Quite dark colour, this one. Already sizing me up. I like to stand their ground, these odd tooth snakes. The taipan's less aggro. Nice. Almost looks like someone's herp spot. Hilarious. After a quick dinner, we head out from the resort for our final night of herping in Okinawa. How much do you like the Yaris, Steve? Not at all. It's got sensors that get triggered by every bloody leaf I go past. Check out the size of this amphibian. Look at it. It's huge. Come on, mate. Off you get. Off the road. No, it's doing crypsis. Plant. It's pretending we can't see it. It's camouflage works really well, except on the road. Oh, come on, mate. That, that'll do. That's enough. You're off the road now. Kinda. Slimy. We got a crocodile newt. <laughs> Have a look at that. See why they call it a crocodile newt? Big bumpy thing, big head like a crocodile. Will they bite me? Oh, hopefully. <laughs> Looks like the, uh, oh, I forget the name, the first amphibians that walked out of water and onto land. I love newts. Beautiful. It's a crocodile newt. It's quite a large newt. There's two types around here. And we'll just put him back in his hole now. There you take him. Out. All these are Kajiki frogs. Oh, these ones are mating. You can see the male on top, the female. Like the whole frogs, they do external fertilization. Yeah, mate, having a good time. Oh, well, there's more than mating. Yeah. The Ryukyu Kajika frog is part of the Old World tree frog family. Their normally amazing camouflage makes them stand out 
on this concrete footpath. And I don't think I've ever seen such a large number of frogs in one area. And this is the favourite food of the haboon. This is camping stands in Japan to stay away from the habu. Japanese are really scared of snakes. I think camping in Japan is a bit different from camping in Australia. Not only are there a lot more venomous creatures on the ground in Australia and people really just don't give a rip. I'm pretty sure people don't get this when they go uh, camping in Australia. I'm just hanging out by the toilets. Yet another beautiful odd tooth snake. I love a man that brings me newts. Such a beautiful newt. This is a saw-tailed newt that Megan's holding. And uh, show us the underbelly. Whoa. It's got a beautiful underbelly. Underbelly. You've got a turn me. Underbelly. Alright, hold it like that. Oh, look at his little underbelly. Happy with that? That's a beautiful mute. Let's put him on that rock or something. Put this little mute back now. Little mute. Wants to go in the water. As we walk through the forest, little do we know we're about to see an endangered and endemic species. What have you found? I've found a turtle. Or is it a tortoise? What I think it, it might be a tortoise. I okay. can't actually see the feet. I'm not so familiar with the species here. <laughs> I'll just uh, grab them so yeah. we can have a look. Yeah, grab it out. Oh, oh wow! He's so beautiful. That's so cute. Look at his little face. Oh wow! That's a tortoise. A tortoise. Oh, his little arms. That'll well, be a female <laughs> because there's no indentation for mating. Oh. It's Hold it, it's got a tick, I'm going to pull a tick. Ow. Oh. Do you want to grab it? It's got a tick on it. Yeah. You want to pull that off, Megan? Why not? Grab, grab it by the head. No. Oh, you'll get that. There we are, gross. Oh. oh, wow, that is a... <laughs> going to pee? Yeah. Oh, several species of tortoise around here. Some of them native, some of them introduced. I believe this is a native one, but I'm not 100%. And I will flash the ID on screen right now. And I knew it all along and I didn't have to look it up at all. <laughs> it's got beautiful red patterning on its face. Big scales on its feet. Let's have a look at the back. It's like the saw shell turtles back home. So we've got a tortoise. You have no idea how exciting this is for an Australian. We've got freshwater turtles and sea turtles in Australia, but we don't have tortoises. Certainly not like this we don't. All right, we'll put her back in her hole. So 
See you later. And my hand for reference is about as big as my hand span. So this is a uh, fish hunting spider. You see the white on the front two legs? It uses them as a lure. The fish come up, have a nibble, and he grabs it, or shrimp often as well. They live around the edge of water. And this one's right near a waterfall, so it's not far from where he'd hunt. Or she, quite big, so probably a she. All right, we've got a green Ishikawa's frog. I've been wanting to find one because I've only been finding, poor old me, I've only been finding the rare blue form. So, it's a young one, and this is the common green form. Though even then, they're not that common of a frog. Uh, but the blue ones, I think, are like 1% of the population. They're a very rare form. So I'm very lucky to have seen the blue ones, but I'm really glad I get to show you the green Ishikawa's. This is a national treasure of Japan. The most beautiful amphibian in the country. And you can see, we've seen in the shops, it's everywhere. It's in toys, it's on the sake, it's on the shirts. It's a real symbol of Okinawa. Oh, look at this tiny frog next to it, a different species. It looks like a tip nose frog, young one, but might be too small. Could be a small grass frog or a Kajika frog, I'm not really sure. Wonder if the Ishikawa frogs, frog will have a go and look at that as food even. This is our last night here. Unfortunately, we've got to go back early because of the typhoon, but what a find. You can hear in the background, there's a call of the local owl. It's an absolutely magical place, the Yamburu Forest. Oh, he just ate it. So cool. Someone's had a little moth. High five. High five. I found him, darling. Well done. You're getting it finding all this stuff tonight. Yeah. What a find, the greenish cowers frog. I can't think of a better way to end this trip. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Next morning, we wake up to the start of the storm. We need to leave the wooden resort on the beach for the safety of a concrete hotel in Naha City. We've got to head back because the typhoon's about to hit, but we've reached the northernmost point of Okinawa. So we've gone all the way from the south of the island to the north in search of wildlife. You can see the beautiful Yamburu National Park behind us and the ocean below with all the reef creatures. What an awesome trip. I hope you enjoy it. I'll show you a bit of footage as we drive back now. After a long and quite frankly terrifying drive back to Naha, we beat the typhoon and sheltered in a nice hotel. Our flight got cancelled and we had to spend several days, which wasn't the worst way to end our trip because it was our honeymoon. This film's for my fantastic wife Megan. I can't wait to do lots more adventures with you.